All right, so we're out here today, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and install this rear end, hopefully. Our UMI stuff showed up. So I got uh, tubular lowers, they're non-adjustable, but I got adjustable uppers. This way we can uh, adjust the pinion angle once we uh, get the drop springs and everything in it. Got the hardware for it. Uh, I, gotta go, I gotta go get one nut. For some reason, it was missing the nut, so. Um, I also got some roto joints for this rear housing instead of running poly a lot of guys told me to do that So I've got them in the shop freezer um, Hopefully shrinking down a little bit. Hopefully it'll make it a little easier to put them in But uh, for now I'm gonna go ahead and stick these control arms in the frame and um, Then I'll worry about getting those roto joints in and shoving the axle up underneath there and hooking everything up All right, so I'm gonna grab our roto joint. I already did one of these. It says to use, I think, a 32 millimeter socket. Um, I am not gonna use that. The first one, it was real tight about um, around the um, threaded part on the inside of this. It was real tight on it, so I'm gonna use a bigger socket, and I'll tell you what size it is here in a second. So if you use a 36 millimeter, it's, uh, I don't know if you can see that real well, but it's pretty close to the size of this. Now I've had this in the freezer for probably about two hours now. So the other side went in fairly decent. I'm hoping this side does too, but I just grabbed a hammer. It doesn't take a whole bunch. So both of those are seated pretty good. And uh, they send me these spring things that go on the inside and I'll show you here. So I can strip over all this junk. But it's this little deal. And that's gonna sit right down in this groove. I got the other side on. Pretty much the instructions say to start this in there like that. And just work it around. Let's see if I can do it one handed. I doubt it. Oh, nope. All right. So, anyways, freezing these, I think, uh, worked out pretty good. I said a 36 millimeter socket is what I used, and uh, it kept it away from the joint itself and just on the outside ring. So, now I'm going to go ahead and uh, Get this thing put in there and those control arms look good on that frame. So I hit my first snag. The uh, chassis doesn't weigh enough to jack this rear end up enough to get the shocks on. So what I did was I took a piece of tubing I had laying around and a ratchet strap. And it's like just missing. It was worse before I had the other side on obviously. But all you do is just a couple cranks. There we go. Oh, 
Open it a little bit more. Couple more cranks. That should be enough. Oh yeah. Like butter. And then drop everything you had. Oh, it's just by shirt. No big deal. I need to get some new shock studs to this. So when I go get the steering, I'm probably gonna pick those up, but I probably won't put them on until we tighten all this stuff. So we gotta leave all this, the nuts and bolts loose on these control arms until the body and everything is back um, on the chassis, full weighted. Then we'll get underneath here and torque all these down. So when I go to do that, I'll probably just switch out those studs then. But for now, they'll do. So. I'm going to go ahead and button this up. We're going to jump up to the front either today or maybe tomorrow. I still need to go get um, steering components. And uh, I might get some new upper control arm bolts that go into the frame. Um, I'm going to clean the ones up I have and see how well they clean up. But if they don't clean up very good, I'm going to go ahead and get some new ones of those. So, Well... I almost forgot about this too, but uh, last piece of the rear end's going in. Um, it's the UMI sway bar. Now this just bolts right to the control arms <coughs> um, in the bottom. So, and I mean, it can only go on one way, so you can't really mess this up. So, um, so I get this in, and I'm going to move up to the front and uh, see how far we get on that. But. Man, this thing's looking good. It looks good. All right, so it's been a couple days since I finished the rear up. Uh, so I started working on the front, and uh, yeah, this uh, this lower control arm over here um, fought me for a couple hours to get it in. The brackets um, were bent pretty bad where it goes in. So what I did was I took a ratchet strap here and I hooked it into the eyelet on the inside and I ran it up to the front of this frame. I ratcheted it and uh, bent it back and I did the same on the inside here and I took it to like this hole here, same thing. Beat it with a hammer a little bit as you can see, a little bent up, but I couldn't get them in there and they were bent pretty bad. So. Uh, I filmed this side. Uh, it is definitely not YouTube appropriate. There was uh, a lot of bad words being used. So I'm um, hoping to get this side done and film it up and uh, use a lot less bad words, hopefully. And hopefully it goes in there a little smoother. But I ended up breaking a dead blow hammer and I had to go buy another rubber mallet uh, just to do the driver's side over here. So. It definitely fought me pretty good. Then I go to put all this stuff together and I don't find my hardware to put the disc brake stuff together. So here I am driving back to tractor supply, get some bolts, get the bolts, get home. And I find the bag of hardware. So that's my luck, but whatever. We got some extra bolts laying around, I guess. Here goes nothing. Oh, of course. Oh. Oh, did I get it enough? I might have got lucky. Uh, of course, my hammer is where I can't reach it. Oh, you idiot. Yep, I don't think this side's gonna go much better. All right, so after about 20 minutes, I finally got it in there. But I went ahead and greased the bushings because once you get this together, you're not gonna be able to get to it. So there's no access over here, so that's all together. And uh, I'm gonna go ahead and throw this upper control arm, get the spindle and stuff in there, so. Hopefully we can get this done before I gotta go to work. I gotta leave here 
probably about an hour, so let's get it cracking. Alright, so on the spring you got a step on one end, flat on the other. I'm pretty sure the flat goes up, so that's the way I'm putting it in there. That's the way I did that side and everything lined up good. The only thing you gotta pay attention to is in your lower control arm, there's a step right there. You want that spring end to sit right in that step. If not, it uh might give you a little uneven ride height, possibly, or whatever. Oh, yeah. Guess I'll bust it first. So. Also, um, I thought I was going to need a spring compressor to put this together. And, uh, ended up not needing one on the other side. So. We'll see if this side works out as easy. I'll show you what I did here in a second. But make sure there's a cup up inside that frame. You want to make sure that's uh, inside the spring. You don't want the spring sitting on the bottom of it. Because uh, definitely going to change some stuff. Right. So what I did is took a ratchet strap. Wrapped it around. Come on, give me some strap. Oh, yeah, you're gonna be like that. All right, too much, but whatever. And then I just ratcheted it up. Ratcheted it, did it, did it. However you say that, you know what I'm saying. But I was able to get it enough over there that I can start the nut on it. Then you ain't gotta use that sketchy ass spring compressor. After uh, 20 minutes of searching for this ratchet, I finally found it in the drawer where it's supposed to be. It's just been one of them days, you know. But uh, it's time to pack some uh, some wheel bearings with some grease because that's my favorite thing to do. All right, so I just put it in the palm of my hand. And then you just want to take this and start feeding it in between those races into those bearings roars and uh it takes a little bit of time and it's a it's a mess but uh i don't have the tool to do it so i don't do them enough to justify needing it i don't know if you can see though once you you pack it in there then it'll start coming out of the top like that so you want to work all the way around the bearing until it's like that all the way around the bearing i'll go ahead and cut the whole thing in some grease and then I'll go drop it down in there and set that uh, seal in the back side. Get this thing thrown on. Try not to get any grease all over your rotor because that's not good. So, if you order this kit, these calipers come bare. Um, I had my buddy Jordan from work powder coat these for me, and they turned out pretty good, so I'm pretty happy with them. I've tried painting these things before, and they just end up looking like crap, and it's just not worth it to me, anyways. So, I was talking to him, and he's like, hey, I got a powder gun, and I said, hey, I got some stuff that needs powdered, so... Here we are. He also did my front sway bar, which you guys will see here in a minute too. 
and uh, that also turned out pretty good. So that looks pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, still need to put the sway bar on, which it's sitting right here, along with the pile of stock stuff that came out the front of it. Well, as you can see behind me, the uh, chassis is not up on the lift anymore. And uh, that's because I had to push it out of the way. Uh, I ended up having to wait on the steering uh, components for, uh, it was like a week, week and a half. So I pushed it out of the way because I had to fix my GTO. But uh, I went ahead and did some mock-up while it was on the ground. But uh, I got the sway bar on, all the steering's done. Um, for some reason, the uh, bump stops on these summits, uh, tubular control arms decided to explode and go all over my floor. I have no idea why, but uh, yeah, the only thing left I have to do up here is put the shocks back in. But uh, I went ahead and threw a mock-up 5.3 block in here, some heads, and of course I had to put the intake on it. I wanted to see what kind of clearance we had in here with these speed engineering headers and uh, it's a pretty tight fit. It is uh, missing both tubes, it might be hard to see on camera, but I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and dent the tubes a little bit around that uh, lower control arm bracket. And then uh, another thing I uh, found, I need to trim the transmission. A little bit where the starter is it's ever so slightly touching and I'm gonna do some squeezing on these tubes there's some gap in between the two tubes I'm hoping if I put this in the put it in the vise that maybe I can squeeze them and I won't have to dent that side up but uh, I knew these were gonna be pretty tight they're inch and seven eighths uh, primary tubes um, the biggest ones that they um, have for it so I did move the motor back one inch, which I did with the ICT uh, billet plates. And uh, I just went ahead with small block Chevy conversion, just uh, normal conversion mounts for the frame. There's that. As you can tell, that bolt's not through the hole in the motor mount because I need to space this engine up. It's a half inch total um my buddy joe's making me some spacers to put between the motor mount and the ict plates that should help us on the gap over here with this lower control arm bracket also i'm thinking it's going to help us on this gap um on this header so i'm hoping it moves it up and uh gets it a little bit away from the frame but He's also cutting me out some tranny cross member um, adjustable sides that I can weld onto this um, the uh, plate that I use to box this in. For now, until we get some tubes made, uh, maybe next year or so. But um, now that it's on the ground, it still has a little bit of flex in it, but it's not nearly as bad as what it was. So I'm pretty happy with it. Um, and then also, once I build a tranny cross member, it's gonna help uh help with that a little bit but so anyways thanks for watching and uh stay tuned um this thing's starting to uh actually feel like i'm getting some progress done on it instead of just moving backwards cutting metal out and some more metal out and then uh even more metal out so thanks for watching make sure you uh give it a like share and subscribe if you uh want to continue seeing uh what this is going to turn into. Thanks and hope you guys have a great day.